Hello, welcome to the Kitchen Spy. My name is Kate and welcome to another recipe video and this time it's a vegetarian recipe for roasted onion, chickpea and tomato curry and this was absolutely delicious. I got the recipe from um, actually the Times magazine and it was uh, extract from Homebird which is a book by Megan Davis and that's uh, published by Ryland Peters and Small if anyone's interested. I, I, don't, I can't recommend the book because I haven't seen the whole thing but certainly the recipes that were in the magazine were really looked really good. Anyway I hope this recipe video finds you safe and well and that you enjoy the recipe and we'll start by having a look at the ingredients. So there were quite a lot of ingredients to the recipe, but they're all fairly basic ingredients that you, you could get hold of easily. So yeah, so we start off with onions. So we, here we've got one large onion, which has been thinly sliced. We've got a whole bulb of garlic and that's going to get roasted off. Then we've got one tablespoon of coriander seeds and then also one tablespoon of mustard seeds as well. And they actually gave a really, really lovely flavor to the recipe. Then on here, we've got one tablespoon of ground ginger and one tablespoon of turmeric and a cinnamon stick. And then we've got two tablespoons of medium curry powder. This is just Asda's own. Then one carrot, and one celery stick and both of those have been fairly finely chopped as you can see there. Then we've got 100 ml of vegetable stock and that seems like a small amount but that's because we're using the liquid in the chickpeas. So we've got two cans of chickpeas and as I said we'll be using uh, the chickpeas and the liquid. So two cans of those. Then we've got a sweet potato, so that has been peeled and cut into two to three centimetre chunks, as you can see here. 600 grams of tomatoes. I just used ordinary salad tomatoes, but I, I guess if you, you could use speciality ones if you wanted. And then 200 grams of spinach. And then two red onions, and these have been cut into wedges. And then, of course, importantly, uh, on all recipes, sea salt and black pepper. So those are the ingredients and then we'll move over to the cooker and the first thing we need to do is prepare to roast the red onion and the garlic. So of course as usual I'm just trying to save a few calories so I'm just using a few sprays of oil but you could just use a slug of any kind of oil if you wanted to. So just onto a baking tray I'm popping the two red onions and just spacing them out and then we you need the bulb of garlic so it's a whole bulb and this isn't a very big one but what you need to do is just break it into its individual cloves like I've done here and then just scatter them amongst the red onions and then just give it one extra spray a few sprays as you can see there just to make sure that they do get roasted off properly and then what we need to do with this is season it and then we need to pop it into an oven which is 220 degrees C gas mark 7 425 degrees F or 200 fan for about 25 minutes until they are roasted and coloured and they add such a lovely flavour to the recipe that you couldn't really miss this step. So I'm just mixing it all through here so that all of the pieces of garlic and all of the pieces of onions have got some oil on them and also some seasoning and then I'm just going to pop those into the oven we need to do is grind the coriander seeds so they just need to be roughly ground so I'm just using a manual mortar and pestle or pestle and mortar I never know which way that should be um, I have got a grinder which I use specifically for spices which is just a coffee grinder but I keep it just for spices but because they only need to be roughly ground I've just used this manual mortar and pestle then once we've got that done, we just pop those into a dry pan 
just a small pan with the mustard seeds and we just want to heat those up over a gentle heat until they become fragrant and you really can smell when they're ready and they make such a beautiful smell and this is a really good tip if you're making a proper curry from scratch is to make sure that if you're using whole spices that you do actually heat them up and that does release the flavour and the fragrance and it makes such a difference to the finished dish. So be careful not to burn them but just warm them through and you'll know when they're ready because they smell absolutely wonderful. The next thing we need to do of course, it's curry, is we need to make sure that we just fry off the onions and saving calories so I'm just using a few sprays of oil but you could give a good slug of oil in here and that would uh, make frying the onions easier and quicker uh, but I, I would prefer to save the calories so a few sprays of oil and then just pop in the sliced onions and just make sure that they're all mixed through with whatever oil you've got through and then we need to cook those off to a light golden brown colour so really just split them up make sure each of the individual segments is apart and then we just leave that to cook down until it's nice and golden brown here we've reached that stage and they are looking really good so the next thing we do is add the rest of the ingredients and I'm going to start off by adding the celery and the carrots and I'm just going to give those a good old mix through the onions to make sure that they pick up any oil that's still left in the pan but also that the uh, all of the ingredients are all mixed really thoroughly I appreciate the fact that I'm making this recipe means that I like it but I would absolutely recommend it as a vegetarian curry it is really really tasty it made six portions and it freezes really well as well I found out subsequently so then we've got the sweet potato and this is actually the first time I've personally have ever cooked with sweet potato I was really surprised about how hard it was in fact I had to get my husband to help me chop it into pieces <laughs> because I couldn't uh, I couldn't get the knife through it anyway there you go so stirring through the sweet potato and then we can go in with the rest of the spices as well so I'm just popping back in the coriander and the mustard seeds and just making sure that they're all mixed through and then carry on with the uh, the powdered um, the powdered spices so we've got here the curry powder so that's going in and then I'm going to go in with the ginger and the turmeric and the cinnamon stick and just going to mix that all really thoroughly. Now because I'm not using much oil, what I probably um, would do at this stage if, if you are exactly like me and, and not using much oil is just put a splash of water in and that just helps everything to mix together. But if you did use a, a really good slug of oil at the beginning, then you wouldn't need to do that. So once we have um, mixed all that together, we just hopefully would be at the stage then when the onions and the garlic are ready to come out of the oven. And as you can see here, the onions are tinged brown. And if you squeeze a garlic clove, it's hot. That's why I'm dropping it. Uh, it is really soft. So the garlic is cooked inside. And what I've done is taken the garlic out of their skins and just given it a light mash with a fork. And then I'm putting the roasted onions and the roasted garlic into the rest of the ingredients and again like I said earlier this just added such a lovely flavour to this curry and I'm just making sure there that I've got every last bit of garlic from the spoon fork not spoon so once um, I've got that all in and again just mix it through then we can start to add the rest of the ingredients so I'm going to start with the tomatoes here and um, you can use obviously various types of tomatoes but because these are going to be cooked down I just use the really basic salad tomatoes and they're quite cheap as well this is quite a cheap recipe in actual fact so I've got the tomatoes in there, then I'm putting the stock in there and that looks like such a small amount of stock and it is, it's only 100ml but we're actually using 
the whole of the cans of chickpeas including the water that they're in so um, chickpea water is called and forgive me if I'm saying this wrong aquafaba and um, actually that can be used for lots of vegan things so it can be used to make vegan meringues and vegan marshmallows um, so it's actually quite a useful liquid I've never used it but I know that it can be used like that and I've seen people use it and I think it's quite successful so um, a good vegan alternative to eggs there anyway so the whole of both of the cans of chickpeas are just popped in and I'm just making sure that I'm stirring that all through because there's not a huge amount of liquid here obviously the tomatoes will impart some more liquid as they start to cook down and we've got the liquid from the chickpeas and of course the small amount of stock but I'm just making sure that the sweet potatoes and things are just underneath whatever liquid there is and I'm just simmering this until it reaches the point where it's actually boiling um, or at least simmering and bubbling away so just once you spot it uh, bubbling on one side give it another stir and if it is still bubbling then it's ready to go uh, if not then just cook it for a little bit longer so I this has probably taken me maybe 10 minutes to get to the point where this is actually ready to have the lid put on because obviously there's quite a lot of ingredients in there and they all went in there cold so once that happens then pop the lid on and we need to cook that for about 45 minutes so when the 45 minutes is done and you're satisfied that it is uh, cooked through then the last thing we need to do to it is just add the spinach in so as you can see here I'm just piling it all in and it never ceases to amaze me how much spinach you can actually uh, put in and it just goes down to nothing so I bought a big bag of spinach so I bought a bag of uh, 300 grams of spinach so I only needed 200 for this so the next day I was making a um, pasta bake and I used the rest of the spinach in the pasta bake and that was really nice so I've never really done that before we put spinach in a pasta bake but I'll definitely do it again and I like the fact that by adding the spinach in you add in loads more vitamins and minerals and I think that spinach is also quite high in iron uh, so all round good thing really what's not to like so moving the spinach around until it all shrinks down and I guess if you can't get fresh spinach you could use frozen spinach here just make sure that you squeeze all of the water out of it before you put it in so yeah I'm really pleased I found this recipe because I've been looking for a really good vegetarian curry recipe for quite some time and all of them have been a bit kind of lacklustre and a bit watery really but I think the extra step of roasting the onions and the garlic really makes a difference to this and also the fact that you've got obviously the sweet um, sweet potato and the tomatoes in there just makes such a difference so I will definitely be making this again so once you've got all of the spinach in and just simmer it for a few minutes and I'm just going to pop the lid on while I get the rest of the serving ready to do so here it is all served up so it's served with rice with some salsa and some little poppadoms and altogether this plate of food came to 580 calories but the curry portion of that was only 236 calories so you could easily have this on its own for lunch with just a side salad or something that would make a really good lunch dish so this uh, actually made six portions as I said earlier and so I've frozen the extra four portions and subsequently to um, recording this we have actually eaten the frozen version and it does freeze really well the only thing that happens is that sweet potato goes slightly mushier than it is in this version but still no biggie really good uh, so I would heartily recommend this recipe and if you do give it a go please let me know how you get on and I hope you enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed making it and eating it and I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and if you have please give the video a thumbs up and if you are a subscriber thank you so very much for subscribing and if you're not yet a subscriber and you feel like you might want to watch the recipes food hauls 
and meals of the week videos that I put up then please give that subscribe button a click and it would be great to have you on board on our YouTube family here over on the kitchen spy so thanks very much for watching you take care see you on the next one bye bye